Aquí podemos visualizar las imágenes de esta lesión que se encuentra en ciego a su izquierda con luz blanca y a su derecha con NBI. We are taking a scuba diving journey into the colon and I have just intubated using the water exchange method. So the gas is turned off, no gas, only using water, infusing water while simultaneously aspirating the wire, water. It's saline, but we call it water. I've reached the cecum, literally within just a few minutes. Here we are in front of the appendiceal orifice, and with water infusion, you can see how I can interrogate with water the anatomy, so you can see I can move the folds around with the water irrigation, the water jet interrogation. And it's not uncommon to find SSAs, sesoserrated adenomas, in the appendiceal orifice. I've often discovered them. So I'll take a moment and look at that, and then I'm just circling back like this in the cecum, and the reason why her prep is not so good is because she has these diverticula, unusual in the right colon, but here she has many diverticula in the cecum, and these were filled with uh, feces, so I had to wash those out. So many diverticula, and here you can see at the, at the bottom you see the lesion, at the top you see the icy valve, and when you're underwater everything floats towards you. So it's just the opposite when you use gas, so it's very easy to maneuver your way into the terminal ileum just by slowly pushing and letting the water float the boat. So I'm floating the boat up the river into the terminal ileum like this, and it looks all very normal. You can see the beautiful villi. You can put on NBI if you want a nicer view. So it looks all very beautiful. And underwater, you can go surprisingly very high up into the ileum. So this is how I do my deep enteroscopy from below, underwater only, like this. All right, let's take off the NBI, coming back, and once again, you just circle like this, and you use the water jet to flatten the surface and to get a sense of the compliance of the tissue. So there's many more dimensions of information you're getting underwater. So now I'm coming out, and you see how the I see valve, the opening, it opens towards you. When you give gas, the I see valve thinks you're a lion, a tiger that's attacking it, and it closes. But when you use water, it feels it's, 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 uh, it's in the natural environment. As you know from pill endoscopy, from the pill cam, that you get these beautiful views because it's underwater. And because the colon is normally, the small bowel and colon is normally filled with water. So here you can see very nicely the IC valve. And this is why we can also resect lesions on the IC valve, like the one you saw earlier today uh, that Maria showed you, but you could have done that one also underwater. All right, now this is a very big lesion. And um, unfortunately, I, they do not have the snare that I usually use. I always try to do an en bloc resection with the largest snare necessary to do en bloc, to get it out in one piece. And that is why underwater rivals ESD, because usually I can get it en bloc. Unfortunately, the largest snare that is available to me is a 25. I usually use the Captivator 2 from Boston, which is 33, but they don't have it here, and I didn't bring one with me. So unfortunately, I don't think that I'll be able to do this on block. I'm sucking out all the, uh, all the I think what happened yeah. is, so the other thing you need to tell the nurse or the assistant is to make sure that the water bottle is always filled. Because I've been putting gas in, thinking it's water, but the water bottle was empty, so I was putting gas in. But I'll suck out the gas bubbles. This is gas bubbles coming from the water bottle. So the assistant needs to make sure. But that's my fault that I did not educate and inform the assistant that they need to keep an eye on the water bottle and make sure that the water bottle does not empty and fill with gas because otherwise I'm putting air bubbles inside and then it is the delay in my procedure. I have to 
suck out all the gas. All right, now here's the lesion. And obviously, this is a 1S, 2A lesion, mostly 1S. So it is a, um, an elevated lesion. It's actually uh, a, what we call sessile. There's a lot of, um, I have to get all these water <laughs> air bubbles out here. So while I do that, I'll talk. So what we confuse now from earlier terminology is the term elevated and sessile. The words, term sessile should only be used with polypoid lesions. That is to say, lesions that are 1S. So this would qualify as what they call a sessile lesion. A elevated lesion is a lesion that is a Paris uh, two classification, um, and it is just elevated. So it's less than 2.5 millimeters. If you use the closed biopsy forceps, that's 2.5 millimeters. So that's how you make the distinction between sessile and uh, elevated. So this is a sessile lesion, 1S type. All right, so now uh, it does have some overhanging. And the whole idea of underwater resection, if you want to do it on block, is to let it float up into the snare. So let's try the 25 snare now. And I'm just going to do my very best for you. And just kicking myself that I don't have uh, the 33. But if you look at the pit pattern here, what I look for is just, is there branching or no branching? Because if there's branching, and we can, f how do you freeze here? Oh, freeze the image. What's the button? Just freeze the image. Well, there's branching, OK? You can see the branching. And this is a Kudo type 4. So if you see branching, that tells you there's definitely dysplasia, probably high grade dysplasia in this lesion. So I would call this a Kudo a 4. The niece type would be 2, because I don't see any irregular vessels. I don't see any fallout of vessels, distorted vessels. So let's just now, now that we know that this is a lesion that does not show any characteristics or features of invasive cancer, because you don't want to try to resect a lesion that is uh, invasive cancer. That would be a waste of your time. So we don't see any of those features. Let's take off the NBI now. We'll go back to the white light. And the gas is turned off, correct? I want to yes. make sure. Yeah, so we it's want off. gas turned off. Yeah, it's off. OK. And you, someone's keeping their eye on the yes. water bottle. Yes? La All right. La estás viendo? So. so the enemy of water is air. <laughs> and we don't want any air in here. It creates the air bubbles. All right, so in a moment, you're going to see the uh, snare. And let's sort of see how this looks. It's a 25. And maybe with some finesse, I might be able to somehow get it to float in. Open the snare, please. Thank you, Angelica. Open it all the way, please. All right, so let's have it open all the way. All now, the what way. I want to do, I'll take off the near focus. These snares are not really rotatable. So what I'm going to do is just sort of pull back. I've got still an air bubble here. So I'll suck that one out now. OK, now I'm just pulling back. And I'm just going to try to lay this snare down with the lesion at 6 o'clock. And I'm going to have an assistant also hold the scope when I ask. So not quite yet. So I'm going to bring the left edge of my snare to the left edge of the lesion. And I'm not giving any buscopan or glucagon or anything because I like the contractility. I'm going to take advantage of that. But as soon as I see that edge of the snare on the left edge there, then I'm going to pivot it over to the other side. OK, hold the scope here, please, for a yes. second. So here you can see this area here. And put the near focus on. So this takes patience. And I'm going to do my best to scoop it. So what I'm doing is trying to get that overhanging part to scoop in. Now the challenge, I think with the 33, I could do it. I don't think I'm going to succeed with a 25. But the idea is to get this whole thing 
to float up inside of the snare. And I'm going to do my very, very best to make that happen. There it's scooping over this way, holding this position. I don't know that I can get it all the way over to the right side. Maybe, but jiggle a little bit. Try to scoop it. Slowly jiggling. All these maneuvers are helpful. Hold the scope here. I'm going to try to turn it this way. Because a lot of times there's an over, and I'm going to rock back and forth a little bit. But if I can't get it to go to the right side completely, I'm just going to have to take what I can get. Ah, look, it just uh -huh. went. Now, uh -huh. now look, I'm underneath it. And now I want to suck. It's called a water pull. So I'm sucking, and I'm just drawing this very gently in. If this were gas, is the suction working? Sí, la succión. Okay, so I'm doing a water pull. I'm just very slowly pulling some of the water out to decompress. When I decompress, I can pull more of the polyp up into the snare. And I might end up having to do some trimming. You can do a to and fro, rock back and forth like this, jiggle like this, different maneuvers. I call it torque and crimp, torque and then crimp. And then Angelica is going to hold the scope just pushed in a little bit. I'm still sucking. Suction is not that great, but I'm, wa I'm waiting. And you have to have a lot of patience underwater. If you don't have patience, you shouldn't do this because it takes a lot of patience. But you see it coming in? So I really want to get oh there. Now, when it goes all the way in like that, I stop and then give some water because I don't want it to white out on me or red out on me. Start to close, please. Start to close. Close, close, close. Close, 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 close. And wait till it's snug. Is it snug? Yeah. All right, so my nurses know when to, to hold it. Now, the key when you resect this, I, am u I use auto cut. But if the nurse just closes, it'll just cut right through. Okay. So the idea yeah, is to give it some time and let the snare cut through it. But I'm stepping on the yellow pedal the whole time, so I'm getting enough coag current. And you can start with a little bit of coag, too. But before I do that, I'm going to do the rotisserie. And this is the rotisserie. See how I'm moving this around? OK. And I'm looking. Sometimes I'll do diathermic dots on the outside just to be sure that I've got the whole circumference. All right. But it wasn't necessary in this case. So now I'm just looking, trying to rotate like this to make sure I got. The other thing I'm looking at is the color. So you want it to turn a little bit. If you really got the whole lesion, it should change color. It should turn violaceous. So he's snugly close. You notice it has a little bit of a violaceous U. So it looks good. So I think we're ready now okay. to do our cut. Okay. However, we always want to be ready for any complication like bleeding. Now, I don't think we'll have perforation, but bleeding definitely is a risk because this is very vascular and very villous. So we have coag graspers or hot biopsy forceps is what I use ready. And we have clips ready. And uh, so we can manage any complication. All right, enough talking. I've given it some time to sort of cinch up nicely. And now I've got my pedals here. And and I'm just going to step on the pedal. He's just going to hold it closed a little bit. And I'm just giving current now. Yeah. And very, very. See, it's bubbling there. You see, the, that's a good sign. Now start to close slowly, Despacito. slowly close. Close, close, close. The bubbles are coming. We have the heat sink effect. Keep going. Keep, keep going. I'm giving some water. Agua. Keep going. Now. Okay. Now it's done. All right, so we do have some bleeding because you see the blood now. So we're going to have to switch on the gas because underwater, I can't see. It gets cloudy. Oh, it looks like there's still lesion left, huh? So I only got part of it. Yeah, I did not get the whole lesion, which is strange. It looked like I got the whole yep. lesion. No, yeah, that's the tick. The other thing I want to mention is when a patient has ticks, you have to be really, really careful. 
This is some mucosa there. That's not a perforation. We just have a little bit of uh, oozing here, so let's see what we can do. Or you could use soft coag would be the other setting. Open the uh, toy grasper. Abre. Abre el coag grasper. Oh. Close. Cierra. Close. Okay, open. I have yeah. to be really careful. This is how you easily perforate. So there's that. So let's look at this and see what happened. Is this a lesion that's off, or what is, is this still there? No, it looks like it's still there. So we didn't get the whole lesion. So maybe she has two lesions, or let's, let me see. It's just odd that it didn't take it's off. It's, um, I think this is just a residual here. And this part is off. Okay, let's look. We've got a little bit of bleeding here on the edge. So let me now have the, so I, I couldn't get the whole lesion on block. I wanted to, but I got most of it. So this one I can get the rest on block. Let me have the 25, please. Elasa. So we have a little bit of oozing Elasa. here. So this is the part that I resected, but I'm going to ignore this right now. And often the bleeding just stops on its own. If you wait a little bit. <laughs> All right, open the snare, please. Autocut. All right, so we'll go back to auto cut. Now, auto -cut I, I'm just going to place my snare like this because I have a nice definition of the plane. And then I'm going to fill it up with water, and then I'm going to take this last piece off. All right, I'm going to have you hold the snare here, please. And I'm going underwater like this. Okay, let's go on the near focus. Now, you really need a water pump that is uh, very strong. But go ahead and start to close, please. Close. Because when you have really vigorous water irrigation, then uh, it clears out the blood more easily. So this is the cloudy view here that we hate. Are you closed now? Yes. Okay, so let's take a look then. Yeah, it looks like uh, I might have to deal with hemostasis. I'm going to have you hold this like this, please. Yes. Okay. One moment. Let me get my, my glass. I am caught. sorry. Open the snare again, please. Yes. So I'm not completely happy with this. It didn't really get it the way I wanted, I was hoping to. Open all the way, please. Open all the way. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to try once again to see if I could just get here. Hold this, please, right here. Yes. And I'm trying the same thing I tried before, which is to scoop it like this. You make sure you get right at the edge. And it's only at the very end that I'll start giving the water now and start to close, just so okay, it floats close, up for me. Close. Yeah, just close it completely, no, no, please. No, no. Is it closed? Yeah. Yeah. So. I notice here how important really strong irrigation is because our pump is really strong and uh, it just uh, clears it out very nicely. So I think I've got the rest now and so we can go ahead and just hold it closed, please. I, I Hello? I'll take off the near focus. Well, I guess I'll keep the near focus on, okay? And I'm just giving a little bit of coag just to start and then we'll cut through, okay? Cut and close. Did you close? Completely closed? Close, Cerra, no. Sierra, yeah, closed. Sierra, despacio. Is it closed all the way? Yeah. Ya está toda. Is it through? No. No? no uh, you sure? No, not, no. Yet. not yet. Not yet. Really? Okay. Okay, now it is. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Open. Abre.
All right, now close this again. <laughs> so okay. I close. think it's just kind of hanging there. All right, let's just take this off. All right, okay. let's take a look now. I want to do some hemostasis, and then we'll do some trimming to get everything clean. So this was not an ideal case. Ideal would have been nicely on block. Now I'm just going to uh, do some hemostasis. And for that, probably the thing about the coagulasper, it's so thin, I would prefer to have a hot biopsy forceps. Do we have that? Okay. Pues 